Hallelujah. I'm going to be very candid on this because my generation needs this. And we have to we have to come to to the reality of what is happening in this generation. I've explained about the wisdom of this world. And that is why even in Romans there is a beseeching that is being done by the masses of God that you do not conform to the patterns of this world. Everything that has a pattern has a wisdom. Because this world is a system. It's being governed by the spirit of the ruler of the air who is now at work on the sons of disobedience, the devil. And so there's the wisdom of this world which tricked Eve to eat from the tree which God had forbidden. The wisdom of this world is destroying a generation. Remember what I said? Anything that is a destruction is a destruction. Because it seeks to counter the will of God for mankind. I'm, I'm seeing how this wisdom of the world is questioning the identity of many young men and women. People are coming to the point of confessing that I feel I am a man trapped in a woman's body. And homosexuality is on the rise and people have this wisdom of the world to back it up. Why? Because... The wisdom of the world captures an individual and eventually wipes out a whole nation, a whole generation. And that is why I'm saying it's a necessity. The wisdom from above is a necessity. Because the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. It puffs you up with false confidence. It is all vanity upon vanities. And it perishes like a mist. And before you realize, people are confessing, Oh, I wish I knew. I will not have done the surgeries I did. I will not have tattooed myself. I will not have done all these things. Who unto them who will hear from, from me about this wisdom from above and still be foolish enough to accept the patterns of this world? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The wisdom of this world is perishing like mist because the world and they that are in will perish. It's all passing away. But those who do according to the will of God, the Bible says they abide forever. The wisdom of this world is earthy. It's sensual. It's devilish. I was talking of Halloween. I was talking of all these manner of innovations, of weapons, weaponry of mass destruction, better ways of foolish ways, sex toys, all these things that are coming up to further the industries of porn, immorality. This is the wisdom of the world. It is the source of confusion. It is the source of every evil work. And there's another wisdom of man. There's a way that seemeth to be right unto you, but in the end is the way of destruction. And I talked of the Solomonic wisdom that ministers cannot use to build ministries. You'll see a wise man, but the family is in chaos. It's scattered because the Solomonic wisdom is only but a gift, it's limited. It cannot build a nation. Why did Solomon have all the wisdom he had and still brought about the destruction, the splitting of the children of Israel, of the whole kingdom? Why did he have it and still die the way he died? Because it can't save a generation. It cannot sustain a legacy. This is the wisdom of a man. The Solomonic wisdom which is just but a gift. But the wisdom which is from above is my necessity. And this is what I insist and say. It is something that has to be be taught and be imparted over my generation. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, the wisdom 
from above is the power of God. This is the power of God. I don't know if you're here. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1. We've read the Paul is coming to the church in Corinth and he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the elo- excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Verse 4, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. So, he, yes, he confesses that there's the wisdom of man. But in the demonstration of spirit and of power, this is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is the power of God. And he says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. And that is why Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the Spirit of God. And these are the words of God himself, says the Lord. Number two, the wisdom of God is responsible to make the church come alive. And when I talk of church, I do not mean the building. I'm talking of the ecclesia, you and I. Christians who have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light, that we might declare his praises. The wisdom of God makes the church come alive. It makes you and I grow in all aspects. I want us to read Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1 verse 9. The Bible says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might not that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, for this cause, we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Because the wisdom from above, the wisdom of God, makes the church to come alive. It makes the church to grow in all aspects. Three, number one was, it is the power of God. It makes the church come alive and grow in all aspects too. Three, the wisdom of God is responsible enough to make us know God better. Paul says, I know whom I have believed. I know this intimacy, this depth, this something tangible. It's not hypocrisy. There's a knowing. Do you know God? Do you know God as a man knows a woman? Have you ginos God? Have you communed with God to the place where in as much as persecution or a gun will be placed on your head at the verge of you confessing your allegiance to God, that you're still going to stand and say you love him, or you're going to deny and betray Jesus because of 30 silver coins, or upon being asked by a maidservant whether you are the one who was preaching the other day, or you're the one who was in the church, or you're the one who confessed the other day that you are a Christian. Have you known God so deep to the point where you cannot say otherwise. The wisdom from above makes us to know God better. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 is a prayer. From verse 16, we cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. There's a lot of ignorance. And that is why people are perishing. There's a lot of foolishness, denseness, brainlessness when it comes to the knowledge of who God is. But the wisdom of God is responsible enough to teach us. The Bible says, And the anointing which you have received teacheth you all things, and it's true, and it's no lie. So how do you access it? How do you access the wisdom which is from above? Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. I'm going to be quick on this so that we can pray. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. Are you there? Proverbs 2 verse 6. He says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. What do you do? Number one. Pursue it. Pursue it. Pursue wisdom. Pursue wisdom. Number two, which may sound the same as number one, seek wisdom wholeheartedly. Seek wisdom wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. The Bible says, because I told you that wisdom has a personality, wisdom is a spirit. Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 13, But ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me, when ye seek me wholeheartedly. So when you pray and you do not find that which you are praying for, check your heart. Were you doing it wholeheartedly? Because in Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible says, Without faith you cannot please God. And anyone who comes to me must first believe that I exist, and that I am the reward of them that diligently earnestly seek me. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Number 3. Having a relationship with the Spirit of God will grow or will make you be exposed to the Spirit of wisdom. Because the only way we're going to know the deep things of God for the Spirit, for the wisdom which is from above is pure as we read in James chapter 3 verse 17. To be pure means to be perfectly in tune with the will of God. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible says, As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, they are the deep things of God. Number three, if you have a relationship with the Spirit of God, then you walk under the wisdom which is from above that is pure, to the extent that you are perfectly in tune with the will of God. You remember Moses who will speak to God face to face, yet he was in the Old Testament. It's because he had the tendency of communing, the tendency of having a relationship with God. Number four, which may also sound the same as number three, is love. Now, love is a four-letter word. Love is work. Love is what? Love is work. Love is an action word. Love is a what? Love is an action word. It means love means action. In fact, love is a verb. It's a doing word. If you have no love, you may not flow in the things of God. You may not be used or you may not bear this wisdom that is from above. Because love... The essence of love is communion, is prayer. That is why it is in prayer the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. This is communion, this is prayer, this is love. If you do not know the path 
that takes you to the secret place of God. You may never walk in some certain dimensions or in some certain levels with God because every relationship has levels and stages. It is it is true a prayer that it is true communion that Solomon asked for wisdom. 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 8 to 13. Number two, under love, love is walking in obedience. I've told you that love means action. Love is a four-letter word which is all about work. In John chapter 14, verse 15, the Bible says, Jesus Christ speaking to the disciples, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I shall tell the Father and he shall give you another helper. So all this is found by walking in obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is obedience. Because the fear of the Lord means to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. All these are trapped in love. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the prayer we're going to make today. That Lord exposes more and more to the spirit of truth. Holy Spirit, we surrender our hearts, our hearts to you. Come and change us. Come and change us. Can you lift up your voice for the next five minutes to the Lord? Zali brande le kosh la brande de bele zuvra shata. Zakata la brande de bele zombre sakila. Erada shata li brande 